Hello, and welcome to Simple Man Sermons, the preachings of a simple man called by God to share the good news of Jesus Christ. Now this teaching, this sermon, may be far different than the average sermon you hear, and I'm okay with that. The Christian journey is often likened to a race, being a soldier, fighting a fight, hopefully this is some good training, some good best practices, that spiritual warfare, that walk with God, to stay on that right path and live an abundant life. Let me put it to you this way. What is the point of your life? What is the point of life? Is it to get a pretty girl or several? Is it to make a bunch of money? Is that an abundant life? I would submit if that were an abundant life, rock stars, movie stars would be the happiest people among us, right? They have crazy amounts of money and fame and women throwing themselves at them and who knows what else, right? Are they the happiest people in society? No. In fact, if you looked at suicide rates of rock stars, movie stars... They're probably far higher than average. And I don't relish in that. That's a bad thing. But that illustrates that those things are not an abundant life. Jesus himself says, Beware. Guard against every kind of greed. Life is not measured by how much you own. It's not. One day, unless Jesus comes back, the Great Tribulation, and Jesus comes back in our lifetime, we're going to die. Naked you came into this world and naked you're going to leave it. And I'm not saying it's not good to enjoy the good things God gives you. God gives us all things richly to enjoy. But make sure that you're owning your possessions as a man, as an alpha male. You're called to have dominion. One of the very first commands from God, have dominion. Be in control. Are you in control of those things or are those things controlling you? Going back to what's the point of life? I would submit the point of life is to grow closer to God, to better serve God, and to want to be in closer relationship with God, to seek God, to love God because He first loved us. That's the point of life. And I started thinking about this, and not at all what I was planning on speaking about today, but I think it's better. The Christian journey is often likened to a race or a walk. Are we seeking to grow closer? I'm going to give you some of the things that I find helpful to grow closer to God, to stay on the right path, the straight and narrow. Narrow is the gate and difficult is the way. Which leads to life. And there are few who find it. Hopefully, you listening are one of those chosen few by God. Called by God. So let's Look at some things. Hopefully unlock some of that abundant life. Jesus came that we may have life and have it more abundant. Let us seek that abundant life. One of the things. Wake up and pray. Wake up and pray. Now, you don't need a theological degree to pray. You don't need some kind of prescription. It's not... Pythagorean theorem, right? You don't need a master's degree. It's not A squared plus B squared equals salvation squared. Cry out to God. He knows your innermost thoughts. It's a relationship. Like any other relationship, you spend time with that person. You talk to that person. Talk to God. Pray to God. It should be the primary relationship you have in life. Seek first the kingdom of God. Jesus says, seek first the kingdom of God. Wake up and pray about whatever. Again, nothing is hidden from God. It's not like he doesn't know your innermost thoughts. If you're struggling with sin, pray to God, right? Who else? Who else is going to help you out of that miry pit and set you on a rock? Wake up and pray. If you're happy, give praise. If you're searching for answers, ask the one who has all the answers. Wake up and pray and read your Bible, the instruction manual for life. 
right? God gave us this wonderful thing. And again, you don't need a theology degree to read the Bible. We live in a wonderful era where the Bible is available to the common man. Read your Bible. I don't care where you read it. You may have a calling to read a certain part or another certain part, but just wake up and read something. And I'm going to submit, do both of these things before you start looking at your phone. Now, if you have to check the time or something or turn off your alarm, but before you open up any app or look up any notifications, whatever it is, unless somebody's calling you because their donkey's in a ditch, their pants are on fire, there's exceptions to everything, but Wake up and pray and read your Bible before you do anything else. Seek first the kingdom of God. Read your Bible. I'm not even going to put a time limit on it. Maybe it's five minutes, maybe it's 15, maybe it's an hour. But read your Bible first. Oftentimes I'll give myself a time that I'm going to read the Bible for this many minutes. And at first it seems like, oh, it's going to, you know, this is going to be a chore to read it for this long, and I'll start reading it, and before I know it, the timer will go off, and I'll be like, wow, I still want to keep reading. So just read something. You can just randomly open it up and flip to it. Psalms, Proverbs. Read some of the first five books, the Torah. Read some of the Gospels of Jesus. Whatever it is. And it's it's not a speed contest. It's not a speed reading contest. You might read... A chapter or several chapters. You may read and meditate on one verse. If you're reading the living word of God, maybe one verse really stands out to you. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Maybe you meditate and pray on that and think on that one verse for the entirety of that session. That's okay. Maybe you just read. But read your Bible when you wake up, when you start, before you get on your phone. That's my advice to you as somebody that does that. And here's something else I would recommend. When you get up, like when you get up out of bed, try and recall a verse. It doesn't have to be one you just read. It could be one you just read. And remember it. And say it out loud or in your head. Think about it when you rise up and when you lie down should meditate on it day and night. You get up, maybe it doesn't have to be a crazy long verse. It could be, if God is for me, who can be against me? You shall not muzzle the ox while it treads out the grain. He came that we may have life and have it more abundant. Right? These these are simple verses that are not hard to memorize, I don't think. You may decide you want to recite an entire psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his namesake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And throughout the day, before you, whatever your things are, pray. I'll give you some of my examples that may not be your examples. When I'm working out, before I do a set, I like to pray. Now, I think there are times and places for different kinds of prayer. There's times, obviously, to pray over people and pray with people. There's times to pray in private. There's times to prostrate yourself literally and humble yourself physically. There's times to stand up and pray. You can be praying in the middle of a crowded gym and nobody has to know that you're praying. Are you trying to get stronger? Well, probably you should go to the author of strength and ask God to make you stronger. I practice shooting. I do a whole other podcast called Gunfighter Life. I don't like to be a hypocrite. I like to maintain my shooting. I like to practice every day. Before practice, hopefully, I prayed. If I'm trying to be more accurate, faster, and more consistent, shouldn't I pray to God for that? The one who gave me those talents for him to grow them? And whatever your things are, maybe you got a 15-minute break and you're about to go to the water cooler. You ask God for help in the next meeting. Maybe it's a long drive. 
Maybe before you get in that car, pray and ask God to get you there safely. Whatever your things are, I don't know your things. I, I don't, unless you're somebody that knows me personally or one of the patrons or something, I don't really know you. Whatever your things are, pray before you dot, dot, dot. Whatever those things are, pray before you make a decision. You know, pray for wisdom and guidance. Are you seeking to be better at something? You probably should do it more often. And another thing, pray. When you go to eat or drink, is that not a gift from God? Yes, it's a great gift from God that He satiates our physical hunger. But what about that spiritual hunger? I would submit the spiritual is more important. Whatever it is, try and remember to pray from a stick of gum to a bottle of water to your evening meal. It's a gift from God. So shouldn't we always try and remember to give thanks? And I'm not perfect. Sometimes I'll start eating and remember that I didn't pray. But shouldn't we try and strive to make it a practice to pray and give thanks before we eat, are you seeking to grow closer to God? Maybe pray more than, you know, once a week at church. Are you seeking to understand God and understand, you know, how to better grow in relationship with Him and have a more abundant life? Probably seek it more than, you know, once a week or even less. What is the first commandment? When Jesus is asked, what's the greatest commandment? What does He say? Well, he quotes a section of the Torah. I'm going to read it for you. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. Right after this, let's keep reading. And these words which I command you today shall be in your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children. And shall talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, when you rise up. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. I'm going to tell you something you might think is peculiar. I take that verse literally. I try and remember God and His Word when I get up, when I lie down. I put a sign on my hand. I put a dot on my wrists. Because I'm not perfect. I forget all the time. But it's a good reminder. So that when I'm about to do a set at the gym, if I haven't prayed and I look down and I think, Oh, yeah, I belong to God. He has marked me. I am special. I am His. Probably I should pray and seek God. Because there's a point of my life to get stronger at the gym. That's secondary. I should be seeking to get stronger in my relationship with God. Seek God first. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. He'll give me the strength, but seek him first. Is that peculiar in today's world to have a little dot that I put on my hand? I do it with a sharpie? Yeah, it is. We're called to be peculiar people. You're not called to be like everybody else. Are you lukewarm in your walk with God? Because I think you know how that ends. So because you are lukewarm and neither hot nor cold, I am about to spit you out of my mouth. Another translation puts it like this. So because you are lukewarm, spiritually useless, and neither hot nor cold, I will vomit you out of my mouth, reject you with disgust. You're not called to be lukewarm. Our God is a consuming fire. Are you on fire? Are you lukewarm? This is from 1 Peter. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. This is very similar to, again, like Jesus quoted, what Peter says here, going to Deuteronomy. Very close to the verse we just read that Jesus talked about. For you are a holy people to the Lord your God. The Lord your God has chosen you to be a people for himself, a special treasure above all the peoples on the face of the earth. So many people want to be special, want to be set apart in the wrong ways. If you're called by God, you actually are special in a far better way than having a bunch of Instagram followers or making a bunch of money. 
You're special in a way that matters. And you're called to be set apart. Holy. The word holy. Kadosh. Set apart. Different. Peculiar. Is it peculiar to have a dot on my wrist? Yeah, do I care? I'm here to please God, not man. And to be honest, most people never even notice. It's a good reminder, like remembering when I get up and when I lie down. Recall a verse. Remember his word that he spoke to me. It's a gift. I should appreciate it and use it. We're called to have these reminders. We're called to think about them all the time. When we get up, when we lie down, when we sit in the house, when we walk by the way. Signs on our hands. From Numbers, I believe, 15. A blue thread on the corner of your garments. Why? Because it's a reminder. It even says as much. So you will remember God and not follow the harlotry to which your own hearts and your own minds are inclined. Have these reminders. Because we all get distracted with the things in life. But I'm going to tell you I take the Bible very literally. Is that strange? Is that peculiar? Yes. Is that good? Yes. Because we're called to be peculiar people. Not called to be lukewarm. What do you treasure in life? What are you seeking in life? Where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Are you seeking first money or a girl? Are you seeking first God? What's most important in your life? Do you get on TikTok or Instagram five times a day and pray once a day? Do you care more about the things of this world or the things of God? And I don't know the answer to that for you, but the good news is, if you're listening to that and breathing air, you can repent. Repent doesn't mean some some crazy formula. A squared plus B squared equals repentance squared. It just means turn back to God. It's, you know, simple, powerful. If you need strength in that, again, pray. Everything you have is a gift. Strength, both mental, spiritual, physical. If you need more, go to the one who is the author of it and ask for more. This life is a journey. The destination for you should be God. So let me ask you a question. Are you growing closer to God? Are you seeking God? Growing in relationship with God? That's a question you should seek to answer. And if need be, seek to rectify. Now let me kind of wrap this up by saying... I do not have a monopoly on personal revelation from the Holy Spirit. You may find things that work better for you. I find you barely function when you wake up in the morning. You need to wake up, drink a cup of coffee, brush your teeth, and then sit down and read your Bible. I'm not telling you that this is not a formula, right? I'm not a, this is not a chemistry. And my ways may not be the best for you. But if they're good and bear fruit in my life, shouldn't I share them? building other men up, using what God's given me and sharing that blessing with others. So if these things work good for me, I am sharing them for you. You may be even farther along in the Christian walk than me. I'm trying to share with you things that I do and find that work in good practices. But don't think that you have to do exactly what I do or or whatever. But seek first God. That That relationship with God, that's an abundant life. That's a real life. Jesus, the way, the truth, and the life. Anyway, with that, I'm going to wrap up this episode. Unlike most, no tactical tip, no verse of the day. Whatever time that would normally take for you to listen to, I'd encourage you to turn the podcast off and read a verse or pray on your own. Take a step in the right direction. With that, men, thanks for listening, and have a blessed day.